Welcome to the Salt Strong Podcast, disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, like diamonds. Fathers across America are leaving their jobs for this. Hey everybody, Joe Simons, like Diamonds, I'm here in the car, in the Tahoe, going to downtown Orlando on my way to a C12 meeting, and it hit me on the importance of what I'm about to share with you today, because it's something happened to me just yesterday that really like shook me, uh, and, and I'm willing to bet, especially a lot of you dads and moms, but especially dads can probably relate with this, and also going to share some some uplifting things about what men are doing and and why they are leaving their jobs for this and you'll find out pretty quickly what this is and i also say just along those lines uh as as i travel i i love absolutely love listening to podcasts like you are right now love doing the audible books and and it's something that really struck me hard uh there's a book by uh brandon kane a uh, gentleman who's done a lot of research just about the mind and, uh, and psychology of people and, and, and everything from marketing to what gets people fired up, etc. And And we all know this, and yet so many of us keep going back to it. And this is another reason I like to do uplifting things here on Unchurched, is there's so much negativity out there, as you know, if you're on social media if you watch the news it's it's 90 percent negativity because that's what fuels people and ironically that's what our brains are designed to do our brains all the way back from the cavemen days are designed to to quickly identify fear and to a uh, quickly identify danger and that's what you know news agencies realize that that our brains they get on overdrive when there's bad news and on good news we feel good for a second and then we kind of go back to this you know kind of an ongoing uh, a, a little bit of of a, of a fear-based life. I mean, it's it's once again, it's how we were originally designed is to be able to to identify when something's about to kill us, whether it was a saber-toothed tiger or another tribe, etc. And we've all been kind of designed uh, like that. And a lot of these news agencies take advantage of it. So one more reason not to ever listen to the news, especially not before you go to bed. Why fill your head up with all the negative stuff right before you go to bed? And especially not in the morning. Why start your day with it? I think if you had to watch the news, do it in the middle of the day uh, where you can kind of just get it out of the way. All right, I digress. I wanted to share that with you because uh, it was incredibly important and hard-hitting. And I've seen it happen to my own friends and family who do listen to the news and do read some of the stuff right when they start the day. And you can just see how it impacts their day in a very, very negative way. So here is the story that shook me. Uh, my son Jackson, many of you know Action Jackson, he is now getting into T-ball. And, uh, you know, he's four years old. And, you know, I was a pretty good baseball player, uh, you know, played all the way through high school and, and, you know, was good enough to probably, you know, play in, uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to say college, but community college. Uh, for those of you that played, you know, with me or against me, you know, I was, I was, I was good, but I was certainly not great, not enough to go to the next level. Uh, but, you know, it, it's interesting as you get older, you know, you've all seen Napoleon Dynamite, right, where the uncle... <laughs> Uncle Rico still thinks he's an amazing football player. Uh, you know, we all kind of still think we're better than we actually were, right? In the back of our head, oh, yeah, we were legends, you know, back in back in the day, back in high school or college or NFL, whatever you might have played in. Uh, obviously, if you made it in NFL, you probably were pretty uh, pretty good in legend. But you know what I'm saying. I, I still in my head think I was probably better than I was. And now I'm sitting here watching my son Jackson, and um, you know I, I've I've now gone to quite a few practices, and and uh, I, I'm like, man, like these kids just don't get it. And, and this is the second year of doing it, and it's it, I just don't see much improvement. So I shared something with my wife. I was like, man, like she's like, how's Jackson doing at practice? And I was like, yeah, he's I just, I don't know, he's just not really getting it yet. And she's like, well, how how much time have you? spent practicing with them and it was like a dagger because I realized I hadn't I completely dropped the ball right and it's almost like oh yeah I'm just gonna be busy with my work and all the other stuff going on and just assume my little four-year-old is just gonna pick up 
baseball from you know a few practices with a coach who's dealing with a bunch of other kids who are in the same boat who have busy parents and doggone it hit me so hard and I was like you know what I, I haven't and so I made a I made a vow I was like all right I'm gonna practice with them and of course last night uh, I, I I asked him, hey, hey, buddy, you want to do a little practice in? And he, he got real excited about it. So I'm now excited. And guess what? It starts raining. So I was like, you got to be kidding. Like pouring raining. So I was like, you know what? We're going to make this happen. Normally, that would have been my excuse. Is, oh, great. Thank, thankfully, I don't have to practice with them. I can go back to doing whatever else I'm doing. And uh, I said, you know what? I, I'm going to... I am going to practice. We are going to make this happen. So we got a, a softer ball, one of those like little Nerf balls, and uh, and I, I threw ground balls to him, and he threw them back all indoors. Uh, we, yeah, we hit a couple couple of fans, uh, but I just watched him smile. I watched his face light up, and and he enjoyed it. And now like he's begging to start doing more baseball stuff, uh, all from that one little practice that probably went all of 18 minutes of me just rolling little ground balls to him in his small little Rawlings glove and him throwing this little softball back to me. And uh, and it struck me as like, man, uh, look how busy we've become that, you know, we don't even have time for 15 minutes with uh, with our kids. And look how, you know, busy and kind of self, I mean, very selfish, uh, self-indulged we are that, you know, we don't have time for our kids and we expect that, oh, they're going to be better at this, or they should be better at this, or they'll figure this out on their own, and, and they won't. I mean, if we're counting on everyone else, in, including teachers, I mean, they, this is a very hard job. If we're counting on anyone out there to do the job of us as parents, then then quite honestly, we've we failed. And uh, so, I don't know, I, I do a lot of these publicly just to hold myself accountable that I, I do go spend time with, you know, with, with my kids and I don't make up the excuses because let's face it, it's easy to make excuses. And then now I've taken in the next step and decided to become the, uh, the, <laughs> the assistant coach of his, uh, of his baseball team. And I'll be honest with you, I was not excited about it. Uh, I am now, but in the beginning, before all this, I was like, eh. You know, I got so much on my plate running a business. I mean, if, if you guys don't know with Salt Strong, we're growing like crazy, and I'm the CEO, and there's just a lot of moving parts right now with inventory and shipping and new employees, and I have a million excuses, just like we all do, and just running a, helping run a family of five with my wife, who's also working, and I was like, I just don't know if I can commit, and you know what? I, I have uh, committed, and it's not as bad as I thought it would be. In fact, it's quite, it's quite awesome, and I'm now getting to impact other people and it all takes you know an hour of, of my day in the evenings. Not really that hard. And I now know just how important it is to my son. The same way it was important that my parents were around and made time for me. And you know, my mom quit her job to, to be around the, the kids. And uh, and that was a you know a big thing back in the days and and maybe perhaps a reason that, that we had, you know, uh, maybe ha- overall happier families and more people sticking together. I, I don't know. I can, I can guess. Uh, but it was interesting looking back at my own childhood, how my mom and dad sacrificed so much. I know my dad gave up a, a really big job promotion that would have forced our whole family to move from Central Florida to, to Chicago, to downtown Chicago. And I'm talking like a massive, massive pay increase. And, uh, and he, he rejected it because... Uh, you know, we we uh, as a family were more important to him, and seeing his kids grow up and not being on a, on a plane all the time was more important. Which which brings me to my next point, and this is going back to just great news out there. I I, I get down sometimes just hearing all the stuff and hearing about all the bad parents out there and what some of these young kids are doing, and and, and just people just seem lost and hopeless. And you wonder, like, are, are, are we all so self-absorbed that, that we, like, we can only put ourselves first? And just seeing how people react and respond and, and, uh, and just how entitled people are. And, and I was just blown away here over the past few months. So, you know, we have had a lot of job openings and we've had a lot of growth. And there's been a theme that... I mean, it's crazy with every job opening we've had, including two that we have uh, right now, 100% of the time we've had multiple men 
and some women, but mostly men, who are quitting their jobs with great companies because of family. So that is the fill in the blanks. It's because the family is more important to him. And I, I want to recognize a couple of them. Billy, if you guys haven't met Billy, he is amazing. He is MVP. He is one of those just team players that you wish you had a hundred of them. And Billy is someone I've known for a long time. He's worked at Publix for 20 years. Publix is a great company. They have great benefits. They have amazing, you know, essentially 401k plan with their private stock. And it finally hit Billy how important his daughter was and his family was. And he realized, you know, if, if you don't know, if you're a manager at Publix, I mean, you're working every holiday. You're working every single weekend. And he's like, I realized I hadn't had a single weekend. I've never spent a single Christmas Eve with my daughter. And wow, and he cried in the interview. We cried in the interview. It was so powerful. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. We got, you know, a young man, you know, a young meaning, you know, 42-ish, 43 who's willing to risk all of that, all these amazing perks for his family. And, and he's thriving now, and he's already got a raise, and he's just doing awesome. And we had another guy, Kevin, who left Home Depot, another great company for the same reason. Like, man, I'm working every single weekend. I'm working nights. I'm having to close down the store. You know, if you're a manager, Billy told me at Publix, he's like, if you really want to tick off the entire public staff and the manager, come in at 8.55 and ask you know, for, uh, for, for, for cut meat, you know, cause if you don't know, they have to take, they have to basically scrub down that meat uh, cutter every single night, it takes them 30, 40 minutes after it's all said and done. And someone comes in right when they're about to close and they have to do the whole thing over again. It pushes everything back 40 minutes. And now he's getting home at 11, you know, uh, 1130 versus, you know, 10 something. But I digress. Uh, it, it was so cool to hear, you know, Kevin left his job of Home Depot to come work with us. And now we have this opening for uh, kind of a marketing and sales manager. And really the two front runners both are leaving their jobs. One leaving his job as, as CEO of his own little small business. He's just burnt out. He's like, I can't work 14 hours a day, even though he's making great money. Uh, he's like, I just can't keep doing it to my family. And I got a two-year-old daughter and it's just, it's more important that I find a great company with great values and great morals and, and uh, that I know will we'll take care of me and I can take care of them. And I said, wow, this is just, it's special and it's heart, it's heartwarming, it's heart lifting. It gives me, yeah, it gets me pumped up. It gets me inspired that there's great people out there, lots of them. I mean, this is just, I'm just one small company, one small business, and we're getting a lot of people like that. So, I don't know, it's just a great reminder, one, that there's still amazing things happening and amazing people who are willing to put their family first. So I wanted to just let you know that it is a reminder. And two, if you're falling in that trap, I, I know this is going to hit someone hard because it just hit me hard just this past week. If you're falling in that trap, of, of always putting yourself first or your job first. There's nothing more important in your family, you know, and, and you can read every book on it. Uh, you can hear every, you know, sermon on it. We all know it, but at some point you just got to put your foot down and I'm not asking you to go quit your job tomorrow, but you know what? Maybe take a night off. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe call in, an extra hour early just to go spend time with with your spouse or one of your kids or whoever it might be it, it's amazing the small things that 20 minutes with my son I, I can see a massive massive impact i could see his eyes light up he was so excited and he's going to tell mommy hey daddy just threw the ball with me inside he thought it was the coolest thing ever that we were throwing this little baseball inside versus outside i mean it's the small stuff right and I could have just as easily been on my computer replying to the emails and all the things that I have going on in the, in the company side. And, uh, and I didn't. And guess what? I didn't lose a beat. And uh, the emails were fine. I got to them the next day. So I would encourage you to, to do that. Take some time off. Take a breather. Take a break. Put your family first. And, and you'll see some pretty amazing things happen in your life. Uh, and, and ultimately, more fulfilling for you. I think a lot of us think that, oh, if I can just catch up, I'll be happier, more fulfilled. And that's not the case, especially with work. It's impossible to catch up. It's impossible to really feel fulfilled just because you caught up on your emails. Uh, but what I found, and I and I, I, I fall into that trap all the time thinking, hey, if I just you know catch up here, it'll make me happier and things will be better. And then I'll have time for my kids. That's not how it works. It's the other way around. It, it, 
and what's what's so ironic is when you do put your family first and even if you're not married yet and don't have a family just putting a close friend or someone who needs help maybe it's a grandfather grandmother someone in a nursing home someone who would just who's lonely and would love to hear from you you put someone like that first above yourself and it's amazing the fulfillment that comes with it and it's also amazing the magic that happens behind the scenes. I don't know, just doors seem to open up. Good things seem to happen every time I've done it. So it's a good reminder. I want to go here publicly and declare I'm going to be spending more and more time. I'm never going to be perfect at it, but I'm going to spend more and more time. And, and that's why I became an assistant coach of my son's team. And, uh, and I, once again, I want, I want my wife to be able to listen to this and call me out when I'm not doing the right thing. And I hope you'll take a stand as well. We need more great people like us, whether you're mom, dad, husband, wife, Whatever you are, we need more people doing the right thing. We need more great news out there. We need more amazing headlines out there. And we need more people putting their family first over a job or a title or whatever it might be. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any thoughts, any prayers, uh, anything that you'd like me to cover in the future, shoot me an email, Joe at saltstrong.com. And if this one hit you right in the gut like it did me the, uh, here recently, uh, let me know. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Everything is uh, private that uh, comes to me at joe at saltstrong.com. Other than that, I will talk to you guys on the next episode. Cause fish in, it's in my soul. It was passed down to me from the days of old. Find us on the water if there was. So